Hey guys, happy Thursday. We've almost made it through the week, yay. Um, I just, uh, so I want to talk a little bit tonight about, um, and sorry guys for the quality of the video. This, uh, you know, as I was saying, this laptop is an old, um, it's a Dell Inspiron, so it's like really, um, and I th think it's going on now like seven or eight years old, so the quality of the video is kind of meh. Um, you can see some granularity, but um, once I get another laptop, it, the video, uh, the camera should be up to date technology, so it should um, be clear. Um, so hopefully that'll happen sooner than later. But um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, doubting yourself in the midst of um, nar a narcissist. So. As we know, like when they gaslight us and everything, they their main goal is to cause us to doubt ourselves and to doubt our perceptions, what it is we're seeing. Um, same thing with borderlines. So, because um, they gaslight and they do crazy making too, they're under the cluster B personalities. So, one thing I noticed um, on a lot of channels is I know that, like, obviously on channels like in the live chats and everything else, they're not able to, like, filter out all the predators right away. Some of them are better at it than others. Like, they have moderators who can get them off. Um, but I just find there's so many, especially the borderlines. They're, like, the worst. They're on there um, trolling and gaslighting people and all that. Everyone, to fuck with everyone, to gaslight, to crazy make. So um, I'm hoping that they will leave voluntarily because of the recent videos I've made. So I'm really actually glad because y'all borderlines are doing me a favor and everyone else on this channel by leaving because um, we don't want narcissists on my channel or borderlines. We don't want any of y'all because y'all are toxic, y'all are abusers, and we don't need you or your fake ass, phony, you know, lying bullshit on my channel. Um, I just know, I know there's so many borderlines on a lot of other narcissistic abuse channels and like for some reason the, the coaches, the life coaches, everyone tolerates them being on their channel. I don't tolerate them being on my channel. I don't want anyone with a personality disorder on my channel. And if you unsubscribe, good, you're just doing me a favor and everyone else. You have done me a favor and thank you so much for unsubscribing because guess what? I don't give a shit if I have zero subscribers as long as they're not one of not one of them is a borderline or a narcissist. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I do not give zero fucks if you like my channel or not, especially if you're a borderline or a narcissist. If you don't like my channel and being the thin-skinned borderline or, or whatever personality disorder you are, being thin-skinned by nature, that's part of a personality disorder is being thin-skinned, and you don't like my commentary, you don't like what I have to say, you don't have to watch my videos. Duh. It's like, you're so crazy. You are so crazy that you engage in things that which you do not like. That's, you know, and that's another thing is, um, with the doubting yourself thing. So that's something, you know, ASSC Direct talks a lot about in his videos, um, Quinn Holiday, that narcissists and borderlines engage in that which they do not like. And which is totally insane. It's lunacy. It's crazy because it's like if you don't like something, you don't keep going back to it. You don't keep engaging. You don't keep watching. You don't keep stalking. But that's what they do. They do that to, to things and people that they don't even like. So it doesn't make any sense. It's total crazy making. It's total, utter crazy making. So I'm not like, you know, a lot of those other channels that kind of, you know, sugarcoat things and downplay things with these predators. Um, I am very straightforward and I will tell you like it is. And um, if you have a problem with it and you're thin skinned, you know where you can go. And that's not my channel. So, um... I'm just putting that out there guys and I really don't care if the borderlines unsubscribe because like I said they're doing all of us a favor they're doing you a favor and they're doing me a favor by getting off my channel 
Um, and I noticed that. I know there's a lot of borderlines and covert narcissists on my channel, you know, just watching my shit. And I really don't want them on here. It's 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 annoying. It's uh, frustrating to have these predators who are just watching my channel to try to get insights on how to better manipulate and better gaslight in the survivor community. And we really don't want them here. We really don't. And we don't need them. Um, so, yeah. So I have, you know, definitely um, gone, you know explicated already on my in my videos about you know what's going on with this and how you know um how they have infiltrated the survivor community um by and they're they're playing the victim card when they're the perpetrator which is really disgusting um and a lot of the the things they're saying on my channel are like oh well you know i was a victim of this and i was a victim of that and i was a victim of this and they're always like the over dramatic you know cluster b bullshit that we don't care about we don't give a fuck about you know i know the difference between a real survivor who's coming on a channel and they're uh, they're explaining their story but they're not doing it in an icky disgusting like victimy way they're doing it in a more like factual straightforward way but i can tell the difference between them and a borderline or covert narcissist um who's explaining their story and um, they're doing it in a very, like, what was me, victim me way. I can totally tell the difference. I can totally tell when someone's being a fake phony. So they really can't get one over on me. Um, so, yeah. So, guys, um, basically, <laughs> you know, we really um, do not want them on this channel, obviously. We have more productive things to do than to entertain any of the cluster bees. Um so let's uh, talk a little bit about, you know, doubting yourself. So um, so that's, that's the main um, thing with, um, with narcissists um, and borderlines and other assortment of personality disorder demo demonic entities is what they like to do is cause you to doubt yourself and to doubt your own perceptions and your own personal um, perspectives. So the biggest thing you can do is not only trust yourself, um, which is what a lot of the experts recommend. Obviously, uh, there's um, Joe Navarro who wrote the book, um, Dangerous Personalities, who talks about the importance of trusting yourself and your gut, intuition, and feeling. Um, and just trusting what you see, because it's like, if you see it the first time, um, what you see was real and you cannot doubt yourself and doubt what you saw or what you heard or what you felt um, because that is what the enemy uh, wants you to do um, and you know as we know when we're dealing with cluster B's borderlines narcissists histrionics all that the evil ones the people of the lie as M. M. Scott Peck says in his work um, when we're dealing with them um, you know, it is a very strategic war that we're at. Um, it is a battlefield. It is a war. And they have declared war on you. The minute that a narcopath or a borderline targets you, they have declared war on you. They have declared war on your mind, on your body, uh, on your finances, on everything else. They have declared war. And they are there in your life to pillage you, um, to take from you, to steal, and um, to rob you of everything you have worked hard for because they want you to have nothing. Um, narcissists and borderlines are greedy. They want to have everything and they want you to have nothing. Um, I remember growing up with my um, sister who was a borderline and um, a borderline psychopath and um, a lot of what she did you know not only torturing animals but um, whenever I would create something like you know I'm an artist so I'm very creative and um, I don't know if I have any work to show right now um, actually I have something let me show you guys so this is uh, something I did not too long ago. It's a charcoal piece. You guys can kind of see that I made this. Um, put it in this little frame. 
but yeah, no, I do a lot of work, uh, especially with black and white, you know, charcoal work and painting, and I'm very creative, so, so most of my life, let me put this way, um, you know, uh, I've been, you know, a really good artist, so, you know, I've been tore down by my sociopath uh, mom, who, by the way, did not raise me, um, but from afar, as she was out partying and meeting all these men, and and ignoring the fact she had kids, uh, three kids, um, she would like chime in every now and then, even though she was not around the house, didn't even contribute a dollar to my upbringing. Um, she would chime in every now and then when I spoke with her like maybe once or twice a year on the phone and say things like, well, you know, your art really isn't that good anyway and you're not a professional. Anything to tear you down, anything to gaslight you, to get you to doubt yourself. And the one I just showed you, I mean, that didn't take too long. That took maybe a couple of hours. So, like, just those things, you know, like, I know I'm a really good artist. I know I'm really brilliant and creative and everything else. And yet, I was being gaslighted the whole time to doubt myself, you know, growing up and also now. Um, but anything to say that's negative, anything to invalidate you, anything to not acknowledge you um, as a human being and your accomplishments, your achievements, your, you know, amazing uh, creative abilities, whatever it is, um, these individuals are always going to have something negative to say. They're never going to have anything positive to say or uplifting. And they're always going to drag you down into their shit, into their negative low vibration level because um, they don't know how to vibrate at a high, you know, um, at a high level, at a positive um, high level. Um, that's why they have to get narcissistic supply and fuel from everyone. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, th that's an example there. Um, so this borderline, um, sister of mine, uh, she would constantly, uh, tear, like, if I created something like that, she would tear it up and, and spit on it in front of my face. Um, and then she would proceed to either, like, strangle me or push me down a flight of stairs or do whatever, um, extremely physically abusive, and no one could even pull her off me. I mean, this bitch was, this bitch was totally psychotic. I mean, just a lunatic. Constantly, like, triggered out of nowhere by her jealousy of me, um, of not only my looks, but also, you know, what I'm capable of doing, what I'm capable of creating, how intelligent I am, how creative I am constantly just trying to tear me down and out of all of us um, my sisters you know she um, she was not like let's put it this way as blessed with looks or, or anything like that so it's just like it's just constant jealousy constant envy and just always trying to tear me down and just acting like such a piece of shit so I mean I cut that bitch off like a long time ago I just told her to go die go burn in a ditch bitch and I haven't, I haven't spoken to her since. I have no use for her. I have, you know, if she died tomorrow, I wouldn't feel anything. And this is my sister. So, I mean, honestly, I, I discarded that bitch, that borderline, so long ago. And I'm so glad I did because I don't regret a minute of it. And I'll never forgive that bitch. I'll never forgive her for what she did. I'll never forgive her for putting a hand on me and uh, thinking she could dare cross the line and... Um, beat on me and abuse me and when I would fight back which I would now and then um and start to you know strangle her back or hit her back she would cry like a little bitch and then go in the corner because she couldn't tolerate any pain she couldn't take any pain and that's what borderlines and narcissists are like they can't take any pain so when I would spit back at her or fight her you know fight her back as a kid and I was younger by you know a couple years um she would like she would like double up and then go and cry in a corner like a little bitch for like you know, hours on end and just um, go run and play the victim right away to everyone. Like my aunt, she'd be like, oh, she hit me and just go on and on. While I'm sitting there being tortured in front of everyone and no one's standing up for me, no one's doing anything. Um, the few people in my family, like my uncle who saw it, he tried to call, you know, he called the police. He would constantly tell her to get the fuck off of me because she would be constantly on me, like trying to, you know, rip my hair out of my head and, and strangle me and beat me. Um, so it was just, she was totally psychotic. I'll never forgive that piece of shit. So, um, she's, she's just, she's totally dead to me. I'll never speak to her for the rest of my life. And I really don't care. I don't have any regrets because I know that that bitch was born evil and she was born a borderline and she was born a piece of shit. So, I mean, I, she, she's nothing in my eyes. I, I don't, you know, she, she has no value to me. So, 
Um, you know, I made that clear to her a long time ago. I cut her off um, in my mid twenties, so I'm definitely, I'm definitely over it. But yeah, no, there's no reason to forgive um, someone who abused you. Like I said in my previous video, um, you know, society tells you to do that and that you'll be happier if you, um, you know, if you um, like, you know, just forgive anyone who screwed you over and um, who, you know, lay their hands on you or whatever. Um, but that's not true. You won't be happier. You'll be miserable, be miserable because you'll still keep that abuser in your life to keep coming back and gaslighting you. And the whole time that abuser, that borderline, that narcissist is sticking in their minds, wow, this person, I can't believe, even if they're a family member, they're like, I can't believe they keep forgiving me. This is what they're thinking. I can't believe they keep allowing me back. I wouldn't have allowed anyone back who did that to me. That's what they're thinking in their minds. And they're just seeing you as a fool, as someone who is naive and ignorant as to what they really are. Um, and the meanwhile, they are gaslighting you the whole time and denying what they are because that is part of being evil. Um, being evil means that you deny what you really are and try to play like you're good. See, the ones who are out and out, like, who don't sneak around and are not cluster bees, um, they might come out and just say, hey, you know what, I'm a bad person, um, I don't really care about people, you know, I, I might hurt you if I'm with you, you know, like, um, they'll, they'll be really honest with you and straightforward, they'll be like, you know, I'm not really good in relationships and I just don't really care, like, they'll be straightforward with you, but the problem with, as we know, with narcissists, cluster bees, borderlines, all that, like, they are not straightforward with you. They are not honest and open. Like, that's why they're such cowards, because they can't just be up front and be like, you know, I don't really attach to anyone. Um, I don't really like, you know, people. I just kind of, you know, want to get what I can get and then move on. Like, they're not going to tell you that straight up because they know they're not going to get what they want out of you. But if they were totally honest up front, like, obviously you could make a more informed decision. But the problem is, is they're constantly sneaking around behind your back, sneaking around in the dark and um, playing all these, you know, useless, uh, you know, juvenile mind games with you um, to try to get you to guess. Like, you know how um, narcissists and borderlines like to leave these little clues behind, like that they're cheating, these little micro clues, as I call them, where they will, um, you know, like someone else's picture and make sure you know that, or just like throw someone's name in, in your face or like talk about someone else of the opposite sex in front of you to get your reaction. So it's all really just these juvenile, uh, delinquent, like, um, you know, high school games, really, um, that they're playing with you. So, um, and of course, you know, going back to the whole um, getting you to doubt yourself that they're really doing that. So they want you to doubt your own preserving, life-preserving gut instincts which are protecting you from them and your body knows that your body knows that they're a predator your body knows that they're an abuser and it's trying to tell you something your gut is so intelligent um, so we actually have a whole um, nervous separate nervous system in our guts and it's actually called the enteric um, nervous system um, and so this this um, nervous system in your gut is constantly um, active like its own brain so in a way, like when they say to trust your gut, like they really kind of mean it because it's actually its own nervous system and there for your survival. Um, and it goes off in the presence of those who are evil and who don't mean you any, any well or any good. It goes off and it tells you uh, to like a warning sign, especially being able to see their eyes because, you know, narcissists and borderlines, they like to constantly wear, you know, Ray-Bans, um, sunglasses, like, indoors, um, and, um, and, you know, especially in their profile pictures, they love that because they, they know, and I, I can sense this when I'm around them, they don't want anyone to be able to see their eyes, right? They're trying to constantly hide their eyes from others. Um, they're not really comfortable if they're not wearing, like, glasses, um, you know, their glasses or sunglasses or anything, they're not comfortable with that because they don't want you to get a clear look into their eyes because then you would be able to kind of see there's nothing there. There's nothing behind their eyes. They're just this soulless, empty, dead, um, meat suit, like, shell of an individual 
um, or you'll see like the anger in their eyes or like the rage in their eyes or the crazy eyes, um, the crazy dead empty eye look. Uh, they don't want you to see that because they know that your alarm bells will go off. They know that you'll kind of catch on to them and they don't want that. They're constantly sneaking around like the little sneaks they are. So they have to wear, uh, you know, this this whole mask thing is probably great for them too because they can cover up even more, you know, with, with COVID and kind of hide, you know, their facial expressions or lack thereof. Um, but they will definitely, you know, they always have to be hiding, always. Um, I remember when I, when I did use online dating for a short time, which, you know, I definitely um, regret because the whole thing was a complete waste of time because everyone on there was basically a narcissist or borderline. Um, but so basically like a lot of them, um, you know, would like, uh, wear, you know, sunglasses, especially in their profile pictures. And I remember like one that I met up with, um, it was terrible. Like he was from, I guess he's from Mexico and... I met him in Miami. This was a long time ago, and I, I was um, trying out, you know, this dating app, which was a big mistake. And so, um, so in his picture, like, you know, there's just like it's just him and his sunglasses, right? And when we met, it's like just told they're so awkward, like borderlines, a narcissist, psychopath. They're so socially awkward. So like when we met, um, you know, I, he was not wearing sunglasses or glasses at the time. And, like, I saw his eyes, and it just looked totally like demon. Like, his whole face looked like a whole demon in front of me sitting at, on this date. It was horrible. And then he started, you know, with the nagging and, like, oh, look at that car parked there. Bet you don't drive that. And just start to nag me and shit. And this was, like, within the first hour of meeting. Insane. They are totally lunatics. I'm like, I'm never going to see this pile of shit ever again. But it was like the first time I met him and it's just like, you know, there's always like a very expensive cars driving around Miami because everyone here wants to show off. Um, a lot of the times they're just renting them. They don't actually own them. So like they'll drive around like in Maseratis, um, uh, you know, really expensive um, Corvettes and luxury um, sports cars, right? So, but a lot of them don't own them. So they'll just kind of drive around in Audis, Porsches, everything and just show off. But they, you know. It's just for show, basically, a lot of it. So, but, like, you know, that's what happened on that date. It's like he was pointing them out, like, oh, um, but you, you know, don't worry that. And it's just, I mean, just the games. But then I started to say uh, sarcastic things back to him, like making fun of his height. And I just said some, you know, sarcastic things back. And, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this turd, he totally flipped his shit. I just love it when they flip their gasket when you say something sarcastic back or you're rude back or stonewall back to them. Um, <laughs> he actually put down his drink when we were out and he was about to walk out of that, that club that we were at. Uh, we were at this uh, place in Wynwood. Um, it's the art district in Miami. It's really um, hip, but it has some nice uh, places. So we were at this um, bar. It's kind of like this, you know, um, red lighting. I don't, I don't know what it's called, red bar or something. So we were out, um, you know, getting drinks. Uh, he got me some drinks. And it was just like, <sighs> yeah. So he basically just, um, you know, literally, when I said that sarcastic comment back to him, he just, he literally just, like, got up, pretended like he was going to walk out. And then I called his bluff. He didn't actually walk out of the date. He just was turning around like, oh, I'm going to walk out. But they get so offended. Oh my god, they're so thin-skinned. Like, they can sit there all day, narcissists, psychopaths, borderlines, and just go on about you and just talk crap, talk trash to your face the whole time. But then when you say anything sarcastic back or you, you fight back, they just... <laughs> It is so amusing to watch their facial expressions and everything. They'll get all pouty and moody and, and want to discard you and hang up the phone and act like a three-year-old. It is so funny. It's so funny. They can dish it, but they cannot take it. They cannot tolerate any kind of pain. Um, <laughs> and this just proves that they're the abuser. They're not someone who has been abused because I find, you know, those who have actually been abused and uh, in their lives are generally pretty hardened people, meaning they're not so thin-skinned. They can take a lot, you know, we can, we're can. we very strong, we can take a lot of pain, a lot of abuse, a lot of um, BS, and we're very strong individuals. Um, and you can see that strength in us, you can see the strength in our demeanor, in our aura, in our eyes. 
um, but they are not not at all like if you say one little thing like that'll set them off and they'll make it visible to you like that it set them off like they'll throw a tantrum or they'll make like a pouty face like they just crap their diapers like they'll be like and just it's just hilarious to watch it really is so that's why I like you know saying things back and not necessarily like cursing them out because they like that but what you kind of have to do is more like subtle micro abuse to them so you just kind of do like the little sneaky little tactics they use like the you know the gaslighting and just sort of like um, make some sarcastic remark about their appearance especially because we know they're like sh these shallow minded demons so they only really care about the material things or like appearance so if you make some critical comment about like their eyebrows or their appearance or just anything it just sets them off it is so funny and hilarious so I love to piss them off um, I love to annoy them and I love to invalidate them <laughs> and I do do that I mean nowadays you know when I'm around them in my workplace or wherever I make sure that they know I know what they are I see them and I make sure that they are afraid of me and by being afraid of me what I do is I'll do the same tactics against them that they commonly do to everyone else and then they'll either think that I'm one of them well they'll probably know like they'll be able to sense but they're like little predatory sixth sense that I'm not really necessarily one of them but that I'm someone who kinda knows about their tactics and how to use them and then they're not gonna mess with me um, <clears throat> But, you know, they say like, oh, well, you're just you're just getting down to their low level by using those. And, you know, I really don't agree with that because I think in a lot of cases you do have to kind of fight fire with fire and fight back. Um, definitely because um, you are being you are at war with them and you are being attacked. You can't always just kind of ignore it and sweep it under the rug, you know, like sweep it under the rug. Because the problem with doing that, as we all know, is that's kind of what gets you in the situation to begin with, with a narcopath is that you know you sweep what they say and do under the rug you don't call it out so in the like the first hour or two of meeting them they might neg you and they might say something like oh well you would be prettier if blah 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 or like you know they'll say like um, compare you to someone or just whatever whatever rude remark and if you don't call them out on it right away and let them know where you stand it's kind of like you are they're kind of like it's like the green light for them to just continue on with it um, and if you call it out they might just you know try some intimidation tactic or whatever but the best way obviously is no contact um, but you know if you kind of have to in the moment to really let them know where you stand and to not be that you're not someone they can mess with and you know you need to do that um, because I find like nowadays in, in different environments when, when people, the narcissist in the room and the borderlines catch on to, to what I'm about because at first they might kind of seem see me and I seem, you know, like laid back and kind of like introverted. I keep to myself. I'm pretty <clears throat> laid back. You know, I don't start crap with people. I don't gossip. And they'll notice that and kind of think, oh, well, that's someone that I can try to come over, you know, and mess with and terrorize. But once they realize that I'm not afraid of them and that um, I know how to use their own tactics against them is when they back off and they kind of realize, oh, you know, I messed with the wrong person. Because, you know, just like predators in the wild, guys, um, their stomach is always bigger than their eyes. And I'll repeat that again. Their stomach is always bigger than their eyes. So, um what what happens is they kind of always bite off something bigger than they can chew just like you know you'll see in the wild um like a, maybe a a single um lone animal like a a sing um a lone lion or something going after like a herd of huge like elephants like they're not going to be able to take them down because they're in a group but they're going to think in their minds that they can take them down but they really can't cuz they're bigger and stronger but that's what uh, predators do is they don't really necessarily size up pe uh, their potential prey very well. A lot of the times they think they can bite off more than they can handle or chew. And that's the case with narcissists and borderlines is they think that they can, you know, bite off more than they can really chew. So they will target someone, go after them and think that they can pull one over. But they realize that they had completely underestimated the individual um, because of their own naivety, gullibility, and arrogance, um, they don't properly assess um, 
the situation, and that's also part of their diagnosis as per the DSM-5, is the inability to properly assess um, their potential opponents, right? right? Which is funny because it's like, you know, we as survivors, um, we know damn well how to, like, assess a predator. We know kind of like now we have the knowledge, we can kind of like assess their level of deviance, their level of evil, their, like, you know, because sometimes it might fall on a spectrum. I mean, it's all bad, but like you can kind of like gauge it, right? But they don't know how to gauge us, but we know how to gauge them, which is really funny. So we kind of like, we kind of know how to like cater our tactics and our you know, um, abilities to fight back against their level of evil, but they don't know how to do the same with us, which is one kind of way and strategy we can win th at this war with them, uh, because they don't know how to, you know, properly assess those that they're going after, um, and they don't take the time. They do study us, you know, they do study us, but they don't study us well enough. That's the problem with them, is that they don't study us well or thoroughly or in depth enough like we do to them. They study us on a more, like, superficial level, um, in a more, like, you know, like, kind of surfacey level, because they're very, you know, like, shallow and surfacey, but they don't really get very, you know, in-depth or deep kind of knowledge about what we are or who we are or what we're capable of, right? So that's, that's part of the disorder, though. So it's like, you know, they're always going to kind of, like, lose in the end, especially against someone who has the knowledge and who is capable um, of not going along with their program. Um, so, like, some of the key things, I think, with, like, doubting yourself is just, you know, one of the, the, the strategies to out kind of maneuver that is just, if you first see something, you kind of write it down maybe about an individual and then like keep that note with you so you can kind of like record the instances where you had like a funny gut feeling with them or like they said something off or whatever. So you can kind of like record it and keep track and see if there's like a pattern of this going on um, so that you can kind of take notes and keep track. That'll help you kind of like, you know, um, keep up with your perceptions and what you're seeing and kind of be able to put together like a pattern of what's going on so you can um, kind of like stop doubting yourself as much, right, with this individual once you see a pattern of the same behaviors going on over and over again. Um, and some other tools to like stop, you know, doubting yourself as much is... Um, to like kind of kind of learn to really um, take time every day to do something relaxing like with meditating or anything that'll um, that'll help bring you closer to your emotions because especially with CPTSD we kind of feel very disconnected from ourselves and our emotions and we're not that in touch with them or if we have depression or whatever or anxiety so a good thing to kind of do is that so you really get in touch with your feelings because guys like we have we have to be in our feelings um just gonna get some water here sorry um we have to be in our feelings uh because one of the ways you know that we were um, gaslighted before is that um, we were not in our feelings. Um, you know, when when the narcissist or borderline or anyone like said something off or said something rude or critical about us, whether it's our appearance or what we got going on or whatever, like we did not say anything back maybe at the time. Like we just kind of like let it go, swept it under the rug, you know, that whole sweeping something under the rug and not tackling it right then and there and saying, wait, wait, hold, hold on a second. First of all, why are you criticizing me? What did I do uh, to set you off? I did nothing. So there's no reason that you have to sit there and, and talk crap and criticize me and try to tear me down. Um, so we don't, like, in the moment, I don't think we're, like, not kind of quick enough or fast enough to really um, say something back or kind of shut it down right there and confront the individual that, that says it the first time. 
you know, that we hear it. So we're not, we're not, because we're doubting ourselves, right? And that's the problem is getting out of that doubting yourself thing. So if you bring it up like immediately and you're like, hey, you know, that was uncalled for, like, and you call them out on it, um, they might back down, but they'll probably just try to, you know, do something worse later. So it's kind of a, a matter of living in the moment because when you're in your feelings, you live a little bit more in the moment. And you're a little bit more, like you kind of go about life in a bit more of a slow paced way because you kind of like take the time to, to sit in your feelings and to understand what it is you're feeling and to be able to act on that, those feelings, um, instead of doubting them. So that's part of it is like when you're, you know, being in the moment with a, um, a borderline or a narcissist, you, you really just, um, can, um, can, can act on those feelings that you're feeling because if you're not in your feelings, if you are allowing logic to take over, which is very bad when dealing with cluster Bs, um, because you always tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to reason this away. Let me just wait. Let me just wait. Let me give it, you know, another chance, second second chance, third chance. Just see if they continue with the behavior. See if they continue with the critical comments or the gaslighting, or just kind of saying negative things to you. Um, let's see if it continues. Let's get, you know, another chance, and a third chance, and a fourth chance. Like, the way that we should be approaching it nowadays, guys, um, especially with everything we've already been through, is to kind of say, okay, I saw it once, and it's not going to get any better from here. Um, because someone who is trying to, like, build with you, and build a positive rapport and everything is not going to say and do those things that will um, be a detriment to that, to your relationship to them. Um, they're not going to start off with saying those things and being critical and judgmental and um, trying to tear you down um, if they really are planning to, to build with you and to kind of um, create like a, a really legitimate, you know, friendship or relationship. They're not going to do that. But someone who doesn't give a damn about you and who does not plan to invest anything in you or to um, or to try to build anything with you is going to do those things, is going to say those hurtful things, is going to criticize and try to tear you down, whether it's criticizing what you wear or your appearance or what you're doing with your life, anything. Um, they're going to be toxic and negative about it. So, um, and try to get you to conform to their way of living, their way of thinking, their way of life, and project onto you. So that's the thing. Um, um, and and just realizing once we once we have identified a cluster B that everything that comes out of their mouth is a lie, that also helps you to doubt yourself less because what you can say to yourself is okay. This individual is a lunatic, they're crazy, and whatever comes out of their mouth is automatically invalidated because they are personality disordered. They are disordered. Therefore, all of their thinking and what they have to say is invalid to me because I'm healthy-minded, I do not have a personality disorder, and I know how to filter information properly, they do not. So whatever information is coming from them to you, you can kind of proper, like, just say, okay, it's all invalid because everything they're saying is just BS. Um, because they have a distorted, you know, disordered brain. So everything coming out of their mouth, you don't really have to doubt yourself as much because once you identify what they are based on the symptoms, based on the patterns of behavior, then you can basically kind of say, okay, anything that they're saying is automatically invalid because um, they are invalid as a disordered, personality disordered individual. They are invalid. Invalid. Because basically, um, evil people, evil, disordered, demonic individuals, um, their main goal is to get you to feel like they do. So toxic, evil individuals want you to feel as they do, and good-hearted, um, kind, compassionate, empathic empaths, um, super empaths, they want you to feel as they do on the inside. So what they do is they try to lift you up, try to bring positivity in your life, try to compliment you, try to, you know, encourage you and all these things to make you feel good about yourself because they feel pretty good about themselves most of the time and they're pretty, you know, generally happy, easygoing, you know, um, people, loving people. Um, but one, the ones who do not know how to love and do not love and 
um, are abusive are going to try to make you feel how they do on the inside with all the projecting, the criticism, the gaslighting, um, which is how they feel on the inside is invalid and, um, and worthless and um, evil and um, so they try to get you to feel that way about yourself. Um, and then create all the chaos in your life, the internal chaos that they have going on inside because they never are at peace when you are. And they know this. They know this about you. They can identify it immediately. Um, and they're jealous of it. They're jealous that they're able to look at you and say that you're pretty happy most of the time, um, that you're pretty, you know, um, laid back and, and, and caring and you actually genuinely care and all this. And they know that they're not like that and they can never be that. So therefore they hate you for that and they want to tear you down for that. They're jealous. Totally jealous. Um... You know, and all these narcissists, you know, that I, I was around, that I was with in Borderlines, they were totally jealous of me. They were jealous of my appearance, jealous of what I had going on, jealous of, you know, what creative projects I was working on, everything, and they never wanted to acknowledge it. And that's one of the telltale signs I know that I'm around one of them is that they won't, like, acknowledge what I have going on. They won't say, like, oh, yeah, you know, I saw your artwork, like, it's really good, or they, they won't, like, acknowledge anything good about you. They won't, because to acknowledge you means to validate you, and they don't want to do that. Their goal is to invalidate you, so they won't ever say anything positive or uplifting about you. They, they'll just constantly point out the negatives, constantly criticize you, and point out um, your flaws, basically. But when they're pointing at you, they're pointing back at themselves, too, because they are the ones who are uh, corrupt and evil and flawed, so they have to constantly point out your flaws. Whereas someone who knows they are good on the inside, they have a lot to offer, um, they are going to be pointing out the positive things about you. It's like the total opposite. They're going to be uplifting you. So, um, Yeah, but... but I mean, doubting yourselves, guys, um, basically, we just have to um, reach a point where we completely trust our perceptions, um, and the minute we see something, we don't question it, we don't doubt it, we don't let anyone's words affect our perceptions and our emotions. We kind of, like, take that in and just realize that what we heard was what we heard, what we saw was what we saw, and we see things for what they are. We take off the rose-colored glasses because individuals who are operating from a place of solely logic, they're not using their emotions, um, and they're not in tune with their emotions or their intuition. They are going to basically kind of write everything off and just say, oh, they didn't really mean that, or like they're just joking or whatever, and we know they're not because when we identify them as a narcissist or whoever, we know they're not joking. Like when they say something like, um, oh, uh, you know, uh, I was really cruel to my kid or whatever. Uh, we know they're not joking. We know they're actually abusing their child and treating them like shit. But no one else will believe it. They'll just laugh it off. Just write it off like, oh, ha, they must not have really meant that comment. But they did. But they did. And especially after we come out of this, we realize that. We, we don't doubt anymore what we hear or see. Because when we identify someone as being an evil, demonic entity, we can know automatically that what they're saying is not a joke that it's true and then we stop doubting ourselves as much and we can write that individual off as evil and invalid and useless to us um, totally useless to our lives they won't they won't bring anything of value at all to our lives because one of the main things that got us in the situation was we took them at face value we, we took them as being like you know one of us as being a human being as having some kind of good and conscience inside them when they do not have any of that uh, when there is no good in them and and they don't have anything to offer us that's that's the problem is we took them as something that had some value when it didn't and once you can change that and just say like this individual actually has no value this this narcissist or borderline um, then you can say, then it's a lot easier to move on from it and to let it go because you kind of realize that they never actually had any power over you and that your value always superseded theirs um, because, you know, you being an empath um, uh, is um, something praiseworthy, especially in, this, in today's society. 
Um, because you have a strong set of morals and values and goals and you have so much to offer the world. And the evil um, Cretans, the uh, evil degenerate narcissist and personality disordered ones are the ones constantly climbing the ladder. They're climbing the corporate ladder. They're trying to always outdo everyone and, and they're too overly confident in themselves. And the problem is, is that the empaths and, and the light workers out there, they're not confident enough uh, in themselves. And they're not, because um, they're, they're humble, but they're too humble. So, so they're not giving themselves the credit where they deserve it. And that's what we have to start getting better at, guys, is not only not doubting ourselves, but giving ourselves the credit where we deserve and standing in that um, firm belief that we do deserve um, good for ourselves. We do deserve praise and acknowledgement and to be uplifted and um, to be acknowledged. So we have to we have to give ourselves more praise and credit um, because the narcissists aren't going to do that. They're going to collude with each other, whether it's in a workplace or not, and um, and target you and lash out at you out of jealousy. But once they know that you are standing in your truth and that you will not let anyone sway you is when they know that you, they no longer have a fool on their hands, that they cannot anymore um, sway you in the, into their way of thinking or their direction. They know that. They know that. And when they know that, then you no longer um, serve any sort of purpose for them and they will leave you alone because they just came around to use you anyway. Um, they're users and they're abusers and they don't have anything to give you because they just are in it for themselves from the very beginning. They're just there to use you, to leech and parasite off you. They are parasites. They are parasites. Um, when I'm around them, I literally feel like a parasite is sucking on me, you guys. <laughs> I look at them and I almost see like a face with like this, you know, like sucker on it, just... Uh, like leeching on me like latching on me like a leech and literally like once it latches on just like sucking me dry like it's a disgusting feeling but that's how we feel around them we feel disgusting we feel like um something is just latched on and starts sucking our life force out it's so disgusting it really is these parasites man something's got to be done about that because they're just going around and turning people into what they are, which is an empty shell. So, um, there has to be better ways to, to help heal from this, guys. And I think in the coming years, we're going to see more um, technology, everything coming out that'll help with survivors of this. Um, whether we're dealing, and I know we're dealing a lot more in the spiritual rather than the medical realm when it comes to narcissists and borderlines. So I think there's going to be a lot more, you know, spiritual um, sort of solutions coming out with like shamanism and other sort of um, spiritual paths that will kind of try to help survivors of narcissistic abuse get over the soul loss and um, the feeling of afterward, the emptiness. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of, you know, new ways, new ways of healing that will be coming out, especially as this knowledge gets out. And hopefully that will help everyone get on a faster track to healing from after surviving this. So um, with that being said, guys, um, don't doubt yourselves. Um, believe what it is you see and hear the first time. Don't write it off. Um, once you hear it and see it, take note take note of it. Um, you don't necessarily always have to confront them up front about it or to kind of call them out right away. Um, but what you should do is focus on the most important thing, which is protecting yourself. Um, you shouldn't be there to like, you know, study them or try to think, oh my God, like I know they're actually a sociopath, but I just kind of want to be around them so I can study them, see what they're like. Like, no, our first reaction should be to protect ourselves first and foremost because we know just being around them just hearing their voice um it's like a psychic kind of like hoovering like they know um you know what they know it's like they know in a way um they can feel um 
our energy that's attached the, to them. So we have to be able to, um, to disengage completely and protect ourselves by any means possible. Um, so with that being said, guys, I hope you have a lovely rest of your Thursday. Um, it's a little late here and I got some more work to do tonight. So um, great seeing you all and please uh, like my video, share my video. You never know who this might help out. And please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you get um, future notifications from my upcoming videos. Um, hope you all have a good rest of your Thursday night and I will talk to you soon.